Right, hello once again. Um, so I think this is the fifth video now. Um, I think it's the fifth or it's the sixth, I can't remember. It's been quite a few uh, few videos. It's been very busy last month really trying to get this engine together. So I've got a few more things to finish off the engine, which I'll show you now. Um, and then we shall get on with actually testing the engine out. So I'm just uh, trial fitting the, the piston assembly. Um, I've got this uh, oven mat that my um, my father purchased for me on the internet. It says it's um, it's fiberglass cloth with PTFE on top. I suppose that's the black bit. I, I don't really know if I'm honest. Um, if anybody can answer that question, and I'm always. So this is my idea for the moment. I've got the oven mat on the outside, and then on the inside, I'm going to put this silicon, um, this uh, 0 0.8 millimeter thick uh, silicon baking tray. The idea is that this will create, create the seal and this uh, black oven mat, which is a bit more rigid, will actually support the, the thin seal. A bit like an inner tube in a tire. So that's what we got. So we got the front of the piston there. Oven tray and then silicon rubber on the inside. So there you go. I've just trial fitted the, the seal assembly. Now, I haven't, I haven't moved it yet, so this is a uh, interesting to see what it's like. It's a bit crinkly. But it does seem to function. Of course, it'd be interesting to see what happens when it's actually under pressure as well. Because it will actually force all this out upwards. Yeah. We shall see. One of the other concerns was the actual stability of the piston but so far that looks to be all right as i said when it's under pressure things will change somewhat so here's my attempt at forming the um or removing the dead space from the, the piston cylinder assembly um, the first method i tried wasn't particularly successful because when i extracted i tried pouring the cement um when i tried extracting the, the piston out i actually uh, pulled all the pieces so what I actually did this time was I just filled it in my hands and pushed the piston down and I connected this one and put a load of weight on it and uh, it's actually uh, ended up better. I'm happy because this bit at the bottom is pretty much formed as it's meant to be shape wise so now I can dig out the circle there. Um, then I'll get a, a carving knife or something and just uh, just uh, sort um, sort all this out and make sure it's all flat up against the edge yet. There you go, starting to take shape. It's not as quite as bad as I thought it might have been. Still got a few bits to fill in but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So I've had second thoughts with the material that I'm going to use for the diaphragm seals. Um, because I've installed and um, uh, taken seals off again, uh, I've actually ended up with a bit of damage on some of them. So I'm not actually sure they're actually going to last in operation. This is one of the seals. Uh, so this is a silicon bit. Um, where I've got the holes there, they, they do seem to rip out quite easily. Um, so I don't think that's going to last. So what I've done is I've actually, I'm upgrading the seals. So I've done a few practical experiments. Um, I've actually found that cotton canvas is surprisingly resistant to burning. Um, I had a hot air gun at about 300 degrees um, on the temperature um, on setting on it, and um, and it doesn't it doesn't really have a great deal of effect on cotton canvas. Of course, they use um, they use 100% cotton for um, oven gloves and things like that. So what I've done is I've cut out a circle of cotton canvas, and I've got some silicon sealant. And I've actually um, painted like an emulsion of silicon sealant onto the clot, onto the canvas. Um, I've brushed it around quite a lot so it soaks in. So I'm hoping this will actually um, um, add to the protection for it and also create um, some kind of seal. So I've got that as my first, uh, the inside um, diaphragm. And for the outside diaphragm, I've got some of this natural rubber. Now I'm hoping that this will act as a secondary seal, but also, because it's quite springy, being natural rubber, it will actually keep the piston assembly central as well. Um, this doesn't have a particularly high um, temperature resistance, um, but it does have very good uh, mechanical uh, um, but It's very stretchy and fairly strong. Um, but time will tell whether the heat gets through or not. So there you go. That's all the piston assemblies put together.
So when I turn the flywheel, let's go. Yeah. Oh, of course, you can hear the air leaking out of the uh, the holes there for the gauge, for the gauge and the uh, non-return valve and the stop valve. So the next job is to stick those on. Right, so this is what I've got for stop valve, some old gate valve I've got kicking around. Left over from another project. Oh, I'm going to have to take the handle off because I can't spin it around. This is a fairly low pressure pressure gauge, it only goes up to 2 bar. Which is about perfect for us. Atmospheric sterling engine. So that's all the valves in place now. Now, the last thing to test is the compression ratio. So this is our gauge here. About here is um, half a bar, and that's what we're aiming for. So, uh, so that's our valve. Valve's closed off. So I'll spin the flywheel. You'll hear the non return valve sucking air into the engine. Oh, not quite half a bar, about 0.3 of a bar, but it, it might be enough to get it to run. Not too bad, but I, I think it I think it might run like that. So um, so yeah, I think we're pretty much ready to give it a go. So here we go. So you got the engine outside, all in one piece, and ready to go. So I'll just go and get some wood a minute. There's my father there. He always comes over for all the test runs. And there's young Isaac. Hello. Alright, so this is a, a rocket stove of types. Um, this is wood we're going to be burning, so it's basically kindling. Um, you could also burn it on sticks and that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't like the bigger wood so much, so, um, so I'm only ever going to burn it on sticks and small, small bits of wood. Right, so here we go. So we're about a few minutes in now. You can start. You can start to hear the howl, howl the fire. Yep. Right. So um, give it a go now. It's been about five minutes since we lit the fire. Um, the stack is pretty smoke-free now, as all good rocket stoves should be. Um, I'm going to close the valve here, and I should spin it, and it should go. <laughs> it was just about go, very just. Well, at least it runs. It's a good starting point, it goes at all. <laughs>
what's going to be of interest with this engine is um, because all the uh, all the well, I call it regenerator section. It's a cooler section, really, but it's kind of acting as a regenerator in some ex in, in some way. We can actually monitor the temperatures as they're going along, so that'd be quite fun. I've got no, um, I've got no way of uh, actually uh, monitoring these temperatures at the moment, so I'll have to sort some out for that. Uh, one viewer recommended get a thermo camera, which sounds like a good idea to be fair. So I'll have a look to see how much they are. Right, so the fire's about to run out, so it's about to stop. One point I like to make is there's, there's a loud clonking noise coming from um, from this side. Um, come to find out, I left the bolt loose, so that's what that noise was. So uh, there you go. Mm, yeah, it's uh, it's only running very slowly. Uh, it's been going for three quarters of an hour now, so that's something. Um, I've already got a few ideas in my head about um, some improvements. Um, one thing I've noticed here is the flywheel's um, not quite big enough. If you can see, look at the flywheel, see it's pulsing, it's speeding up and slowing down. Uh, that's problematic in Sterling engines because um, uh, the, at one point in the cycle, the energy is imparted into the flywheel. If the flywheel just, just gives way and moves out the way, then, then the energy isn't collected at the right point. Um, so that's one point. Um, another point is on these seals here. You can see they're puffing out. I'm actually losing compression ratio on those because they're puffing out. I'll just stop in a minute. See, it's puffing out of that. Um, been, I might have to change the design of this so it actually supports the seal as it, as it pushes in. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Um, one really good thing is it's uh, it's only ran on a few sticks to achieve this. If you look at our fire here, it's just, um, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's used a handful of kindling and, and a few few logs, and uh, that's about it, really. You look at the chimney, uh, no smoke at all. Um, so uh, I would say the concept is um, basically proven. Right, so thank you for uh, looking at that. Um, I'll be interested in what you think about all this, and um, I'll see you next time. Ta-ta.